All right, welcome back. Today, we're going to showcase how to use a four point and an eight point spacing system and why I recommend you always use the four point system. And we'll go through a few different examples of how these systems are actually used in the real world scenario. Before we get started, why use any grid system or spacing system? So the eight point and the four point systems are used in app design to create consistent, scalable and flexible layouts across different screen sizes and devices. There are a few different points that you might want to consider using a system at all. Point number one is that every time you use a system or a framework, it removes the decision making factor of many things. So if you just have a system like this that goes into work for you, you no longer have to guess what sizes are used across your designs. Therefore, your designs will become more consistent in spacing. So by using a grid system like this, you can ensure that elements such as buttons, margins and paddings are evenly spaced, resulting in a cleaner, more harmonious design. You can ensure scalability across different devices. The four and eight point systems are easily scalable to various screen sizes between mobile all the way through to desktop. Having the efficiency means that maintaining your design, especially as it grows, will be much easier easier. Also, the consistency makes it easier for you to collaborate with others. For example, other designers and developers, it removes a whole bunch of guesswork out of your workflow. And the predictability makes your entire design much more easier and much more modular to work with. So let's go through the design file over here together. We have a title page. We have assets. So these are the assets that we are going to use. I have a bunch of icons. I've got a link from where I've gotten them from. And I have a avatar image, which I've gotten from Unsplash, link down here. And if you go through the designs, I'm going to mess with these. And this one over here will be untouched for you to copy in order to follow this tutorial. Cool. Let's go ahead and explain how these systems kind of work and how they would be implemented in a real world example. On the left hand side, we have a four point system. On the right hand side, we have the eight point system. And the way that they work is that you essentially have a base point, which you then multiply by the number that is under the name over here. And then you get the REM size and then you get the pixel size. And REM size are a CSS unit, which stands for root EM or root M, which essentially represents the font size of the root element. And most browser by default have that root element as 16 pixels. So therefore one REM equals to 16 pixels. And that's how we do the math over here. Let's go through this and understand how we measure these. If you're working with a four point system, you grab your base unit, which in this case is four points, and then you times it by zero you get zero. We usually just have a one pixeler as numbers like this come handy for outlines or HR elements. And then from here onwards, you essentially multiply your base unit, which in this case is four and in the right hand side case is eight by this number. So four times 0 0.5 is two pixels. And the way that you calculate this is you essentially go two divided by 16, which would then give you the REM unit. I'll make a separate video going through the different measurement units that CSS offers and what they all mean. When it comes to development, developers prefer using the REM size rather than the pixel size because it makes for a more accessible and more scalable design system overall and a more scalable design therefore. So when it comes to designs, you're going to use pixels and then they get converted into rams. So now that we've got the measurements out of the way, we can see if we go through this list and I've got 0, 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4. And then from here onwards, I'm actually jumping up by ones all the way through to 12. And then from here onwards, I essentially just want to match the units of eight because at this point, four pixels doesn't really make a lot of difference. And I'll explain why when it comes to smaller numbers, you want to have a little bit more numbers to play with. And then when it comes to larger numbers, it matters less and less. If we sort of compare the two over here, we can see that in both the four and eight point system, we get the one, we get the two, but not the two over here, but you do get the four, you get the eight, but you miss out on a six, you miss out on a 10 and you miss out on a 14. Traditionally, people were using an eight point system. However, the eight point system has a bunch of issues because it misses out on some of those smaller numbers and smaller numbers are usually really good for making sort of micro adjustments and having more control over the designs that you do. Okay, let's go through this example together and we start out with the fonts. So I have two point systems over here. We've got the four point and an eight point and I'm going to enable my UI. Both four point and eight point, we start with 32 in font size and 40 line height and both of these numbers are 
available across both units. So 32, 32, 40, 40, 28, 28, 40, 40, 24, 24, 32, and then we got 20, 32, and then we also have 20, 32. So when it's the larger measurements, we're actually fine at both ends. Where things get a little bit trickier on an eight point unit versus a four point unit, generally speaking for more complex UIs like dashboards or anything that requires anything more than a marketing website, but even marketing website included, you require flexibility when it comes to your UI. You wanna have access to a font size as little as equivalent of 12 pixels all the way through to, well, depending on the design that you do, that number changes. In these two cases, we wanna have four sort of base font sizing for our body. When you're working with a four point system, you could start with a 20 and you could work your way down to 16, which is a typical body font size, 14, which is also very popular. And then we've got the 12 that usually gets used for footer or some buttons and other elements like that. But because of the eight point system, not having access to, for example, font size 14, you no longer have access to that. So the only way to sort of make this work without breaking your point system rule is for you to start from 24. So you have to bump it up by four and then work your way down to 20, work your way down to 16 and then work your way down to 12. So you miss out on that 14 over here. Now, initially when you do this, it might not seem like a big deal. And you could see that both kind of work. So I'm using my title three from both units over here. And then I'm using a font size 16 versus a font size 14. And as you can see, it doesn't really make too much of a difference here, but where it makes a huge difference having access to these extra numbers is when you're working on more complex components like this profile button. So this profile button over here can be a button that we use in a sidebar menu of a dashboard, for example. And it essentially houses your avatar, the company that owns the workspace, your name, maybe a badge that represents the account type that you have and an icon that indicates that this is a dropdown menu. And therefore it needs to come with an actual dropdown that you put together. So if you look at the two over here, this is the eight point system and this is the four point system. So let's go through this together and just see how they were put together on the left hand side. Because if you look at them from far away, it doesn't really look too different, but then it's the details that really matter. So let's start out with the amount of space that each of these would take. Right. So with the eight point system, we managed to get this to 64 in height, but then we managed to save around four pixels in height over here. Again, this might not sound like a lot, but when it comes to a confined space, like a side menu bar of a dashboard, four pixel goes a long way when it sort of adds up with all the other elements that you could potentially save space within. The other things that you might be able to notice is we currently have a six pixel padding all around on this one. And six pixel padding is a a number that is not available to us when we're designing an eight point system. So not a big deal, but then when we take a closer look over here, my avatar and my company logo, if we use the eight point system, eight point system has access to one, four and eight. So if we go back over here, well, one can look a little bit too thin. Four is obviously too thick and eight is twice as thick. So the ideal number for a situation like this is actually two and that's where two comes in handy. So that's one of the benefits of the four point system because it gives us access to those small numbers for minor adjustments. So this rule kind of carries on across this entire component. So if you look at the user's name over here with the eight point system, we only have access to font size 16, but the font size 14 might actually work a little bit better over here since we're working with a very confined amount of space. Same as when it comes to this pro badge, if we double click over here, you can see the pro badge, we had access to either eight or a four where a four might seem a little bit too tight and an eight might seem like we could shave off a couple of pixels just to create a more consistent look where, as you can see, if we use six, because our four point system gives us access to number six, we get better results. Same as the space in between these two guys. So this one is at four and this guy is at two. And as I said, this kind of just goes on now because of the larger font size, you probably want more spacing between these two elements and you can probably get away with a smaller spacing over here. In this case, these two don't really make too much of a difference, but you can see if, for example, in this case, if the name starts growing a little bit, you get a little bit more space with this design over here. And it looks a little bit more compact. You can see that the same rule sort of carries across when it comes to our dropdown as well that we're going to use with these buttons. So if you have a look, I had to use font size 16 
line height 24. I could get away with 14 over here. Since it's a drop down, I can actually fit more items in there. I could also get away with smaller padding versus a larger padding to, again, save a little bit of space between the two. If you look at these guys in use, the same rule sort of applies. You can see the final product over here. It's a lot more compact. It saves quite a bit of space compared to the eight point system on the left hand side, which still kind of works, but it just doesn't look as nice and slick as the one on the right. So this is why I would personally always go for the four point system for most of the work that I do. I hope this video helped you learn something today and I'll see you guys in the next one. This video was also sponsored by Space Duck, which is my own company. And here's a video about that. Space Talk is the research and knowledge tool I wish I had as a designer. As designers, we constantly juggle research, hold numerous meetings, manage stakeholders, learn new skills, and more. This is where Space Talk comes in, a comprehensive ecosystem of research and thinking tools that bring everything together into one place. Capture anything you want for a very specific project or any item that you want to come back to at a later time, simply by using our browser extension. Every item that you capture is automatically titled, tagged, and embedded within the library, allowing you to search for it later in a way that aligns with the way that you think. Additionally, everything that you captured is treated according to its type. Save an image and the colors are extracted. Save a PDF and the content is searchable. Save an article and you get a reader-friendly mode. Save a YouTube link and you get the YouTube preview. You can also customize your environment based on your research needs. For example, when working on a project for a client, you can create categories to organize similar content and add custom properties based on your use case. So for example, you can see how I have all of these custom data attached to this component. In the same way, you could do the same thing for your customers. This is a profile on Alina, but she is also attached to a customer interview that I've done with Alina, which has a relationship of added her as a customer. And this is the customer interview that I've done with her, all within one place, all searchable. You can then consolidate everything in spaces to create a focused project environment. Set up workflows to track your work, like this, and invite clients and contributors to collaborate with you on a project. Of course, this is just one use case, but there are many ways to use Space Talk to capture content, research, inspiration, learning materials, and more, and then later use it within your projects. Give it a try today, and thank you for supporting this channel.